the T-bolt. Which will slide right in on the gear tracks and uh, lock it down. But before we go there, what I'll, I'll do a demonstrate is um, attaching the deeper, screwing that in on the top hole because we're using the flex arm. And then sliding this into position on the gear track. And then and there it is. My Jackson Mayfly is all set up, ready to go. All I need to do is sync this to my phone. Uh, in case I don't want to figure I'm going to lose it, I've got uh, this uh, security tether that it comes with and uh, there's a, a little clip here it comes apart I can attach it maybe here like that so then that way if uh, if my flex arm does loosen up on the water or something and this does vibrate off or whatever um, I'll be somewhat secured here with uh, with that, and uh, I will be able to, to collect my uh, my deeper. Uh, fit All right, binder. as you can see, I'm in deeper water. It's reading about six foot two or whatever, and my Raymarine is saying five nine. That could be all dependent on uh, on transducer location uh, and height. I suppose if I wanted to, I could take this flex track here and submerge the ball a little bit to uh, get it pretty darn close. Um, both devices are reading water temperature at 84 degrees. So uh, I think I'm not going to adjust it. It's 5-4 on the Raymarine, 6-2 on uh, on this um, and uh, down there. I don't know if it really is a fish, but it says it is. Right down close to the bottom. We'll uh, see what happens here. I try to try putting a little line there. So yeah, the little like, call icon like on my phone normally does when I'm on GPS mapping or something like that. So uh, it seems like it would work uh, to receive phone calls. So that's a good plus, I guess. Whoa try next time is some type of uh, battery pack to the phone or um, solar panel from net zero or zero whatever they're called and then uh, see if we can keep this thing charged because it looks like it's going to be about maybe a five six hour thing here's a bait crashing behind me I'm going to go investigate so uh, I think we'll conclude the test uh, when I get back but uh, so far, I'm really enjoying the, um, the deeper fish finder. It's uh, it's really handy. I wish maybe my phone was a little bit bigger of a screen, but uh, and with uh, the sun compared to the Ray Marine, you can see that maybe the Ray Marine has a better display. But you know that's all not a fault of the deeper fish finder. It is uh, primarily the fault of my phone versus uh, the bravery. If this, after all, I did catch a ladyfish. In fact, I caught two others. Um, it's, it, it's helping me find my structure that I need. It's looking for the species, and it's even identified some fish. So it's, uh, it, it's probably worth the investment if you don't have a fish finder and you want one that you can use in a kayak. Maybe in a boat. We're going to test that later here. Um, ice fishing, that will probably happen sometime, but not in the immediate future. Maybe even fishing from the shoreline. Um, I think it's uh, really worth, uh, worth the investment. I'm thinking maybe we'll even have to give it a try, let's say, surf fishing. I don't know if that will even work. But uh, 
let's uh, I'm gonna sign off and uh, can this one today and then we'll uh, see what happens in a few more weeks when we get out for some walleye fishing in northern Minnesota all right this is uh Daryl Olson day test day two uh, we're up here at Wee T Lake this is gonna be interesting because we normally don't have uh, internet service so I'm gonna have to probably go airplane mode on my phone to see how it uh, lasts um, in there otherwise it does drain your your phones down pretty good here um, this time I'm positioning the deeper on the front on the mayfly to uh, you try it there compare it to the dragonfly um, so we'll uh, we'll see how that works and try to get some on water footage of uh, of it working and uh, maybe some bow fin fighting action out here Daryl Olson here from Yak Angler uh, I was out today testing uh, the deeper pro plus the deeper fish finder out at Wee T Lake place where you can't get any cell phone connections or anything like that it wasn't hooking up to my cell phone today I don't know why um, so it wasn't couldn't this it wasn't connected so uh, I'm thinking when I got home I tried it here it gave me the same message so I'm thinking that possibly it needs to be charged even though it's been maybe I'm gonna say three to four weeks since I used it last and according to the instructions it's uh, good for up to six months for the Pro Plus but uh, we're gonna go ahead since I have to charge it to determine the troubleshooting part of it um, I'm going to show you how uh, it comes apart so it's a twist thing on there that's the cap don't have to worry about that right in there I don't know if you can see that but there's a USB port and I've got a, a USB cable here we'll plug it into the wall but uh, I use a white one here so you can see where I'm hooking it so uh, in here there's no on off switch so it's technically the the power is on all the time so uh, yeah that's how it be hooked up and you plug it into the wall to charge um, so we'll give this a try and uh, hopefully uh, that'll resolve my problem I've got my uh, fully charged deeper fish finder. You can see the little green light. We're going to unplug it and then attach the dome back on there for the for the deeper. And what we're going to do is um, try to align it so that the marks are there. I'll show you that here in a little bit. And if you notice the two marks right here, well, I might not see it exactly, but uh, hopefully it's in, it's all lined up and uh, we're, we're supposedly waterproof on the, the Deeper Pro Plus and ready to hit the water again. All right, watch for more updates on uh, the Deeper Fish Finder as we explore and test it out in various scenarios. Darrell Ospreck, Yak Angler, we'll see you in the water.